my name is Deja, um, and I have had one abortion. Um, I found out I was pregnant um, by a guy that I have been dating for over, like, it was almost a year, almost a year, almost. Um, we had kind of hit a rough time where we were trying to, where like stuff was kind of getting a little bit complicated and we didn't know if we wanted the same things in life. So we were already kind of like on a burnout. And one day, um, even before the period was late, I just didn't feel right. And I have previous children. So I, I have two, I have two children already. And so, you know, of course, like I know the, I know the feeling. And so I took pregnancy test and it was positive. Um, was I shocked? No. Um, happy? No. Was I disappointed? Yes. And not so disappointed in the fact that I was pregnant, but I was disappointed in the fact that I knew that I knew up group I would have no support being pregnant. I would have no support being pregnant, let alone, you know, having a child, period. Um, having the child period, I would probably be more so alone. So I was really just numb for a few days. I really didn't tell anybody because I had already been expressing my feelings about my boyfriend at the time and how he was treating me and like stuff that was going on. So I didn't really want to like further have a, have a further smear campaign against him. Um, and that's something that happens when you are involved with somebody that you know, is not the best person to be with emotionally or mentally. They, you know, I'm not saying like narcissist or he's a bad person or anything like that, but I had already, my friends have already had a preconceived idea of him just from previous situations. So I didn't want to further make myself upset because I knew expressing that I was pregnant was going to cause them to be like, oh, well, you know, he's not going to be happy. What are you, like, basically like, what are you going to do? And so I didn't feel like having like embarrassment because it's kind of like a problem of being disappointing. It's kind of like embarrassing, especially like having previous children. You know, it's very, it's very embarrassing telling somebody that you're pregnant because it almost feels like you're telling your mom that you peed the bed in the middle of the night, you know, instead of being like, oh my God, yay, they're gonna be like, oh my gosh, again. Oh my gosh, like why does this keep happening? You know. And so it's probably like part of that stigma that comes around being pregnant, why not? So a lot of them. But, um, and so and I felt like, so I, I was just like, like, disappointed. I was embarrassed. And I was confused because, you know, my other two children, I can definitely, I can definitely admit that I was being sexually reckless with my previous partners who I do have children by, that that was definitely risky sex. Um, but I was very, just very confused as to how I got pregnant because we had been being safe. So I was very angry and confused because, you know, we did everything right. You know, we used the, we used the condom, you know, I tried to check my ovulation, which obviously doesn't work. <laughs> obviously doesn't, which obviously does, those, those apps obviously don't work. Um, so I was like, I was just very confused. And did I tell anybody? It took me a few days to tell the first person. Um, and the only reason why I had to tell that person I was pregnant was because I needed somebody to watch my children for me while I went to my appointment. That is the only reason why I really told anybody. Um, I, at this point, to be a hundred percent honest, I, um, didn't even tell, I didn't even tell the, tell the father at that point. Um, just because I, I knew it was not going to be a pleasant situation and I did not want to deal with the emotional ramifications of, and, I, and I'm saying like he would, I'm not saying that he would harm me or that he would yell at me, but I could definitely know that there would have been some things said to me that I knew that he would not be able to, because I loved him at the time. I loved him so much that I did not want to give him an opportunity to be mean to me or say something to me that would make me not like him anymore. And so, knowing I was pregnant, I didn't. I didn't want. To, I didn't want to tell him. 
because I didn't want him to be mean to me. And I didn't want him to tell me that, you know, oh, like, I can't, we have to do this. You know, I didn't want to feel forced. Um, because of course it's my choice, but I didn't want to feel pressured into it because I'm that's the type of person I am, is I'm very like, I'm very if I'm causing you pain and I cannot cause you pain, I will sacrifice my own happiness and everything that I have to make sure that the other person's not in pain. So I knew if he expressed to me that he did not want this child and he wasn't ready, didn't want it, wanted me to get, did whatever, said whatever, that I would have probably dropped everything right then and there and just went and had an abortion then. Because, you know, if I'm causing you pain, I want to stop causing you pain. Instead of worrying about like my inner, my inner thoughts. Um, and then like one day I started spotting and I'm not going to lie to you. I was very excited to start bleeding. Very, I was very excited to start bleeding. Little did I know that's part of the surprise that comes later. Um, I started bleeding and I was, and I'm not going to lie. I was very, ha- I was very happy. Like I called my OB and I was like, Hey, I think I'm having a miscarriage, you know, like I think I'm having, you know, I think I'm having a miscarriage, you know, guilt, guilt free, you know, and of course it's sad, but like, I just felt like, bleeding to go started ble- I swear when I wiped and I saw blood I my shoulders just relaxed you know it was like oh my gosh like thank you lord like I'm miscarrying like he's gonna be happy I'm gonna be a little bit sad but I did it out of my control you know still trying still trying to conform to today's societal's societal's you know what's okay and what's not okay you know an abortion is not okay, but miscarrying, everybody sympathizes with you. Everybody's so sad, you know, and the, and that time when everybody would be sad for me, I could also be grieving what could have been, but it was natural. Nothing that I could do to help it. Okay, cool. So I started bleeding, called my OB up and I was telling her I started bleeding and then the bleeding kind of like faded off. And so I was like, okay, well maybe like, maybe they just need help being flushed out or whatever. And so I was still hopeful that I was having a miscarriage. Um, and then after that, the bleeding kind of just faded away. And I was like, oh, okay. And then I started, then I was like, okay, so cool. Then I started having morning sick, morning sickness or breasts and all of this other stuff. So I was like, fuck, I'm obviously so pregnant. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie. I waited a week or two, I waited a week or two. I waited a week or two and I made my, I made my first appointment because I made my first appointment with doctor, with the doctor, I made my first appointment to like see how far along I was, to get an ultrasound, all of, you know, everything. Cause at this point I've known, I've, at this point I had known I've been pregnant for about a week, two weeks now, a week, 10 days now. And I make my appointment and my doctor, who I'm always pregnant with, my OBGYN, she's like, oh my gosh, I'm pregnant too again. We're pregnant together again. And I'm like, but you're a doctor, you know, like you and your husband are planning babies and you guys are happy about this stuff. And I'm already a single mother and I'm pregnant again. And I, you know, it so really wasn't like, at that point when she told me she was pregnant, I was like, I I can't. I can't go there and look her in her face while she's pregnant and tell her that I, I need her to prescribe me. Cause my, my OBGYN, um, very great. She told me, um, later on, I don't know if I'll have time to get to it, but later on, she told me, she asked me like, why didn't I come to her and tell her like, what I was thinking? Because she would have, she would have taken care of me and that she was never going to judge me. And that that's something that women down South have an issue with and that she's from up North. And that I should never have to, I should never, like, I have to hide something like that because I shouldn't be ashamed of it. But that's, that's later on the line when I told her, when I told her when I started having complications, um, when I told her, that's what she said to me. And, you know, but at that time, you know, I'm finding out she's pregnant, she's, she's happy and I'm pregnant and I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do, but, but you know, looking you at your stomach, you're so happy. I'm going to be, I feel like I'm going to be pressured into wanting to keep my child because that's how I'm supposed to be feeling right now. And so I, a couple days got passed and I'm trying to work and I can't work because I'm so sick and I'm missing, I'm missing days of work and I'm getting written up at work because I'm so sick and I'm so tired 
And even though I've been pregnant, usually the beginning of my pregnancies, I'm very, I, I, I'm sick, but I'm still able to function my everyday life. But for this pregnancy, everything was just, it was hard. Everything was really hard. Eating was hard. Doing anything but sleeping and throwing up was hard. And, you know, I have two smaller children. My children are small. And they need a lot of hands-on, hands, hands-on. Um, and I was just sitting there looking at them. And I, and I mean, literally, it was four o'clock in the afternoon. It had to be four o'clock in the afternoon. And I had put up blackout curtains, closed my blinds, and I had made it pitch black in my house. Four o'clock, because at that time, like, I was just so, I was in such mental disarray, you know? And so sad that, you know, my, my kids were playing around in a dark house with the TV on as their light and some light and a couple of like night lights to play and stuff. But I just could not bear to look at the sun, to look at the outside world because I just felt like I was suffocating inside my own body. And so, you know, a few times I almost broke down and told my mom, but I was like, I can't tell my mom because she's gonna be disappointed in me and I can't you know, I don't feel like answering the million questions and I don't want to tell my friends because my friends, you know, they're going to hate who the father is supposed to be, but they're going to love the idea of me having a baby and being pregnant and they're going to try to encourage me. But at the same time, like I have, you know, it's just, it's just, it's a lot of people don't understand the ramifications of being radical about abortions. They don't understand what they make a woman go through mentally when it's something that literally has to be done because if I had, if I would have went through with that, preg- and I had to think if I go through this pregnancy, what is my life going to look like right now? I am literally $200 away, $200 away. At that time I was $200 away a month from not being able to afford my apartment or anything. $200 away, you know, it's not, it's not realistic. People want to talk to people, people want to talk down people about food stamps and Section Eight and Medicaid and things like that. Where people, with someone like me, I do. Well, don't get me wrong, I do qualify for Medicaid and I do qualify for some food stamps. But as far as like money from the state, any extras, I don't qualify for because I work. And into the eye, into the eyes of the to the USA, I make above the poverty line, so I don't get much help. Even though I struggle, I don't get much help. But, you know, nobody else sees that. People look into my life and like, oh, you have an apartment. You know, you're always hanging out with your kids. Your kids are well-dressed. You're well-dressed. Everything looks so put together. But in reality, you know, two or $300 later, that can be all swept from under my feet. A lot of people don't, real, a lot of people don't realize that when it comes to having to make these hard choices. Because, you know, I can give my kids this lifestyle that they're comfortable in. Or I can have this extra, this extra child in my children will have to be three kids in one bedroom, sharing it, sharing one toy amongst the three of them, not being able to go, not being able to go do what we need to go do as much. You know, some people might maybe able to make that sacrifice and think that sacrifice is okay to them. And that's completely okay. And that's their choice. And if they feel like that, that's what they want to do. But for me personally, at that time, that's not something that I wanted to do. And my children are finally getting old enough to go off to school and do things that are finally getting financial freedom from not having to pay for things. And so I was just thinking about everything and I called, I called Planned Parenthood. Um, I called Planned Parenthood. And at that time, I had only known about surgical abortions. I didn't know like medical abortions were a thing. Um, until my, until one of my dear friends that I confided in, who's confided in me before that she's had an abortion. But when I tell you, she will go to the end of the earth to hide the fact that she had an abortion. And the only reason that she told was hoping she had an abortion was to try to talk me out of mine. That is the only reason she told me she had an abortion was to talk me out of mine and condemn me and tell me that I'm making a big mistake and stuff like that. And, and, and like I said, it's very crazy how critical people can be when, when, when you're in a situation like this and how crazy it can be because, you know, she had one kid prior and had an abortion with her second pregnancy. 
I went through it by second pregnancy. So, you know, your life could have been my life any moment. You don't want my life, but you're going to encourage me to have a third one. And you see, like, no, <laughs> no, absolutely not. <laughs> uh, gotcha. No. So then um, I made the appointment with Pan Parenthood. And she told me that if I wanted a surgical abortion, that I would have to wait a couple of weeks. Because at the time, I was already probably like seven or eight weeks. So, you know, thinking about my previous pregnancies, you know, I'm like a couple of weeks is very, is, oh, when you're, when you're having, when you're making, when you're making a baby inside your stomach, you know that a couple, when you've been through previous pregnancies, you know what can happen from week eight to week 13. You know what that change looks like. And so I told her, I was like, I honestly, and it was not in the best part of town. That Planned Parenthood was the best part of town. Um, she told me that I would have to go to like South Atlanta, which is a very horrible, horrible place in Georgia. And um, well, depending on the area, but the area that the clinic was in was not a nice area. And, you know, you know, with surgical abortions, you have to like go under and have somebody pick you up, but they don't think they, they don't want to send you home in an Uber. And remember, remember, the one person that knows, she tried to talk me out of it. So she was out of it. At that time, I did at this point, I still haven't told the father yet. And my friend who babysitted my children. So I had nobody to pick me up on the other side, because I live in the top half of Georgia, and that's near the middle bottom part of Georgia. And so I was just like, oh, okay, what are like, is that like, what are my other options? She, she did inform me about something called a medical abortion. And the way she made it seem, it seemed like such a cakewalk. Like you come in, we give you a physical, you know, make sure that you make sure that you're not being harmed. And then you take the first, you take the first pill and then you go home and then a couple of hours you sit and you insert the other pills and then the pregnancy, just, and then a couple of hours later, the pregnancy just passes and you should have some spotting and come to your follow-up. We'll have a telehealth follow-up appointment. And if, it, if you feel anything is wrong, give us a call on this nurse hotline and, or go have an appointment with your OBGYN and they can't tell the, or go to the emergency room or your OB and tell them that you admit you're having, you think you're having a miscarriage because they can't tell that you took these pills. And I said, okay, cool. That sounds, you know, it sounds rather like, like a cake, like a cake walk. I take these pills, you know, everything, blah, 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 cool. So I go to my appointment and this is when, this is at the height of COVID. So nobody was allowed like in with me and you know I'm there and I have very mixed views on parent after this after this I have very mixed views on Planned Parenthood and not because of what they do but we'll get into that I went to Planned Parenthood and I you know everybody was very nice everybody up front was very nice um I got my counseling and I went to go get my ultrasound and they make you sign a paper that asks if you want to see hear a heartbeat, if you want to see the fetus, or do you want to know if it's multiple, a multiple pregnancy? And just out of curiosity, I said no heartbeat, uh, and I put no to seeing it unless it's multiples. Just my luck, <laughs> just my luck. So I went back to the ultrasound, and she was like, "Well, do you want to see the screen?" And I said, "No, not unless it's multiples." And she said, "It's multiples." And I said, and that's when like instantly this horrible sense of, I don't even want to say regret, like this horrible sense of like, the best way I can describe it is being like, have you ever, have you ever had something, have you ever had something you were so excited for? And then when you get it in your hands, it drops that feeling when it drops where you're like, what the fuck? You know, you're like, oh my gosh, what the fuck? And you're, and you're like, and you want to scream internally. Like, I got hot, I got sweaty, I started fidgeting. And she said, Are you okay? And I was like, Yeah, just let me see it. Long and behold, yeah, it was, it, it was, it was twins. They, they, they were, they were, they were, they were identical twins. 
and she could see the look on my face. And if I'm going to be complete, and, we're, and the whole point of this documentary is to be transparent, correct? So let's be transparent. At that moment, as an aid worker, for somebody going through this, she should have sent me home. She should have sent me home and told me to come back when I felt better and more secure about what was going on. Instead of doing that, what she said was, okay, well, you can, well, here's a picture, here's a copy, do you want a copy of it? And I'm like, fuck yeah, I want a copy of it because who's ever going to believe me when I say this? Like, who's going to ever believe me? You know, oh, I got pregnant, it was twins, you know, but I had nothing to show for it. No one's going to ever believe me. So she just gets up and walks out and is like, I'm going to give you a few minutes. So at this point, I'm like, and so she, she just, and I know part of it is not to show any emotion because you don't want to make somebody feel like they're making the wrong decision. And I a hundred percent, I a hundred percent understand that. But if somebody's having, if somebody feels like they, you can tell that they're uneasy about the situation. That's at one point where you should go and inform the doctor or whoever is in charge of this whole situation. Hey, yeah, I told her it was twins and homegirl about broke down. I think we should have her come back tomorrow or come back Monday and, and see if she still wants to do this, you know, because she was like, I'm just gonna give you a few minutes. So I sat there alone in the dark ultrasound room. At that point, I was like, I have to tell him. I was like, I have to tell him. I have to tell him. So I'm texting him, no response, calling him, no response. They, I come out, they sit back in the waiting room to take the pill. My next step was to take the pills. And I call and I'm calling and I'm calling and I'm calling and I'm calling and I'm calling. No answer. I'm still sitting there. Like a 30 minutes past, he calls me back. He's like, what's going on? Are you okay? I'm like, I'm pregnant. He says, you're pregnant. And I, I'm going to admit, I did lie and told him that I was going to play parenthood for birth control. And they told me I was pregnant while I was there. But I had known. But I just didn't feel like, you know, once again, I, I just didn't feel like explaining and answering all these questions. You know, because when you're, when you're in a situation, when you're in a crisis pregnancy, People don't understand that you don't want to answer 25,000 questions. You don't, I just want you to tell me that everything's going to be okay, no matter what decision I choose. But this, but if you want to give me your opinion, everything's going to be okay, but this is what I feel like you should do or what we should do. I feel like this would be our best option. No. He's like, you're pregnant. I'm like, yeah, I'm pregnant. He said, how far along are you? And I said, look, I'm pregnant and I'm pregnant with twins. Silence, complete silence. And I'm like, can you come up here? Can you come up here so we can like talk about it? I was like, I don't, I don't, I don't think I want to do this anymore. I was like, I don't think I told because I was like, I think that like because I at that point, I'm sorry, I'm getting like flustered because at that point I was just like, well, they do offer abortions here. And without a without questioning music, like, how much? And that kind of hurt my feelings, you know. It wasn't like a, hey, I'm gonna come up there, come grab you, let's go eat real quick, let's go eat real quick and let's talk about it or let me come up there with you to be with you for, let me come up there to be with you. No, he was like, oh, test me how much it is. And I, you know, I already, already, I already had, had that information because you know, I, I've already talked to Planned Parenthood before this about this. So I had already had that information, but so I told him how much it was and he was like, well, if you pay for it now, I'll just pay you back. And at that point, I was like, this is crazy. Like, I can't believe this. I can't believe this is happening to me right now. Like, I, I called I call somebody and I'm, and I'm calling you distraught. At that, I'm calling you distraught. And he doesn't come. He doesn't come. Um, he barely really talks to me the rest of that day. And he knows that I'm, he knows that I would be, he, he knew that I would be taking the, the abortion pills that day. Um, and I didn't, didn't really hear anything from him. So I went to the room, spoke to the doctor, and this is where I feel like, this is one of the, this is the second time I feel like Planned Parenthood dropped the ball. I went to the room with the counselor, not the counselor, with the doctor, sorry, the counselor, the doctor, the prescribing doctor of the pills. She hands me a glass of a little cup of water and she hands me the pills. 
And she says, well, this is the pill that's going to stop the fetus from essentially striving. This is going to stop everything. And I said, I looked at her and I said, is there any way I'm going to get these pills so I can reverse this? And I feel like as a professional at that time, I should have been told to leave the office until I have made my decision. And I asked her, and you know, at this, and I asked her, you know, I've matured, you know, I've matured in two years. So I know just as much as she could told me to leave, I could have left by my own accord. But at that time, I felt like I, I, if it makes sense, I felt like I had no other options because in growing up, growing up black, there's two different things when it comes to being a baby mother. You can have the baby and you can have the baby being a single mother and you can be involved in all that hoorah, rah, I didn't want that baby anyway, blah, 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 and be involved in that stuff. Or like my mom always told me, you don't have a baby a man doesn't want. It doesn't matter how bad you want that baby. It doesn't matter how connected you feel. You do not have a child that a man does not want because your life is going to suck. And I was my first child's father. I had a baby against his wishes. My pregnancy was a nightmare. Nightmare. My second pregnancy, I was with my child's father, even engaged to my child's father. So it was a tad bit of a different situation. But I thought back to my first pregnancy and how like horrible I felt and how I wasn't alone all the time. And I was at the time I was like, I really don't, I don't, I don't have a choice. Like I, I have, I have to, like, I have to take these pills. Like there's, I have no other choice than take these pills. So I, so I, just looking at her and looking at the pills, looking at her, looking at me, looking at the pills, and I'm just like. So we sit there about five, 10 minutes and she's like, well, you can come back in a couple of days if you would like. And she was like, but I can tell you since you are having twins, the longer you wait, the more likely you have to have a surgical abortion. But at that time, I was still unaware about how accessible abortions are in Georgia. Very, very accessible. I was at that time, I felt I didn't know how, how accessible they were. So I felt like this was kind of like, you know, I would have to go down to the south side of Atlanta, somewhere unsafe. So I was like, okay. And I took the pill, swallowed it, instantly wanted to throw it up, instantly regretted it, instantly wanted to throw it up. Went home, got, got some lunch because told, they told me to eat beforehand. Um, they, and when I went to the pharmacy to fill my prescriptions, when the prescript, when the pharmacist came out with three or four bags, I was like, what is all this? You have to take an antibiotic. Yeah, don't tell you these things. I'm telling you, Planned Parenthood didn't prepare for any of these things. She told me that I had to insert the other pills, but she didn't tell me that I have to take an antibiotic. She didn't tell me that I needed narcotics for pain, narcotics for pain. Because if you're telling me that it's not supposed to be a lot of pain, but why are you prescribing me narcotics? You know? If it's something that Advil, if it's something that Advil can't handle, it's something you tell somebody at the beginning because she prescribed me narcotics and also nausea medicine. So I'm kind of already like, what am I going to mess up into? Like, what's going on here? And there's some, there's some puzzle pieces missing to this puzzle. What's going on? They just prescribed me like all this crap. Like, I don't know what's about to go down. I have no clue what's about to go down. So I ate lunch. And I will always remember my meal. Like I had Popeye's chicken, French fries, and red soda. And I can't have Popeye's anymore. I can't eat it. Every time like someone offers me Popeye's or I'm like, oh, I can eat, I can eat Popeye's right now. I'll order it and I'll open it up. And I instantly get nauseous. I can't eat it anymore. And so we were listening to music and we were trying to, we were, we were trying to kind of laugh and trying to keep my mind off of stuff. And then my mom, my friend's mom called and she had to leave. And I asked her, I was like, hey, coming back? She was like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to come back. So I'm like, I have to take this pill. Like, I was like, I have to do these pills. And so she was like, well, do the pills and I'll stay for a few hours, but I have to go. I can't say that I have to be a plan. And I was like, okay, fine. So I took the pills, I inserted them. You know, and then I started, like an hour or two, I started feeling cramping, nothing crazy. Um, my friend had to leave. So, of course, I called my boyfriend at the time. And I my boyfriend. I'm telling him, I'm like, oh, my gosh, like, I'm in so much pain. Like, I was like, I'm, I'm crampy. I don't feel too good. Like, I'm scared. Like, can you come? Like, can you come? 
And he was like, no, I'm, he's like, no, I'm working right now. If it gets worse, call me back and let me know. Okay, fair. At that time, you know, stupid me. Oh, okay, fair, fair, fair enough, fair enough. that like I should have contractions and I know what a contraction I know what a contraction feels like I started having these contractions and what I mean like I'm talking about like contraction you have to like sit up and kind of have to like find some way to like lean over for find some relief and I didn't have any release and I started I started I started dropping you know blood clots and I was like okay so it's starting but the pain just intensified. I took narcotics. Pain was still crazy. The whole time I'm going through this and pain crying, my sons are sleeping beside me. One in the bed, one in, the, one in his bed, and then one's beside me. And I'm going through this and my children are just sleeping and I'm crying in pain, walking to and from the bathroom. Because at this point, I wasn't told that I would not be able just to wear regular pads. So I'm bleeding through pads, bleeding through pads, bleeding through pads. And I'm like, this is crazy. So I call the nurse's line and I'm like, this can't be normal. Like I'm taking the narcotics. I'm still feeling, I'm feeling everything. Like this is, I took the narcotics an hour ago. I feel nothing. She said, well, take a half, take a half of another one, half of another one, nothing. Still in so much pain. So at this point she's like, okay, well maybe you need to go to the hospital how am I going to the hospital? And I have two children. So, you know, Planned Parenthood of my book was not the best in the situation, was not the best option in this situation for me. Um, and I literally, I called up, I called up the father and, and I was like, you know, something's not right. I can't stand up. I'm in so much pain. I don't know what to do. Like, I need you to come help me. And he says in the most monotone voice, I just can't up and leave work people people need me to keep them safe and I'm like well what about me like what about me like I feel like I need to feel safe too and he's like well my job is about the greater good not just about one person's feelings and you know that's really put in perspective to me that I'm making the absolute best decision I could be making as much as it's killing me to make this decision because what are the chances of being pregnant with twins again what is the chances of that ever happening again you know but I was like at that point I'm making the best decision for me and my two sleeping children right here right now that are living that are breathing the earth's air right now and so after that, I got the phone with him. And it's like my body knew. I hung up with him and I went to the bathroom and the biggest clot came out, like the biggest intact water. You can tell like, they were, basically like whatever that they were in, that sack that they were in, flopped right out. And I inst- my body instantly went out of fight mode and I had to cry. My body had finally stopped cramping so bad. And so I'm not going to lie. I took the whole thing out the toilet, the whole thing out the toilet. And they're both like, and they're both like wrapped in the little, like whatever it's called. And they just like, they were, they looked like they were sleeping. Um, they looked like they were sleeping and it was very sad, very graphic. I have pictures of it, but I don't know if, I don't know if you're ready for that. Um, but uh, it was just very, you know, I'm not a blood person. I hate blood, but they, Planned Parenthood really dropped the ball on stuff that I could be seeing. I was not told that what I would be, I was not informed correctly about what I was going to be seeing, the pain that I was going to be feeling and things like that. So I was very upset. With, I was very upset with Planned Parenthood at that point. Very, very, very upset with them because that, that, picture of them floating around in that thing in my toilet is scarred into my mind and people think that abortions is just oh vacuum suck it up suck it up nobody ever you go to sleep suck it up suck it up nobody ever sees it come in pregnant not pregnant anymore that's not the case I tell you I'm deeply traumatized by that by the the, the, the scene I saw in my head 
and that it was just not an easy cakewalk for me. And I just didn't get up off the toilet, flush it and walk away because I didn't care. That's not the case at all. Um, but yeah, so they, they passed. Um, I held one of them's little, one of their little, little hands, little tiny, like they weren't bigger than like this. Um, I hold one of their little tiny hands and I was very sad. Um, I think I cried hysterically for a very long time. Like this wasn't just like, a, oh, I don't want to be pregnant. Like I'm just going to go out and be reckless now. You know, that's not the case at all. And I, um, and I planted them in a planter and my boyfriend was supposed to bring like flowers and stuff. Nope. He came, he dropped by the day after everything happened. He dropped by and he um, sat with me for an hour while I was ugly crying. When I mean ugly crying, I mean like probably like past Kim Kardashian ugly. And I was just like ugly crying and he just gave me like some weird like side hug, I guess, and got up and left. Got up and just, oh, I gotta, I gotta go home and get my uniform on for work. Oh, okay. Um, and, you know, I had a lot of complications after that pregnancy. Um, I was still getting positive pregnant. I bled from May because my anniversary of my abortion was May 15th. I bled from May all the way up to November. I got pregnant. I got positive pregnancy tests from May all the way past November that I was having to get pregnancy tests. I had to go back to my OBGYN and she had to give me an ultrasound to see how much was left in my uterus, how much, how much she called it. She called it garbage, abortion garbage about how much abortion garbage was left in my, in my uterus. And I had decent amounts of cheese. So I had to, I had to either had two options, take more pills to get it all flushed out, take more pills or to get it surgically or, or, or just let it, let it bleed out. Um, I chose to let it bleed out, but before all that happens, like I'm telling you, um, cause this is the, this is the same time that the black lives matter protests were happening. And I was down there in an adult diaper, bleeding through the adult diaper down there protesting. And the adult diaper, two days, two or three days, because I had my worst in the 15th and Black Lives Matter happened like the 18th or 19th. And down there marching with my, with my people, horribly sad, dead inside, everything had to. And that's another reason why it just brought to my, brought to light why I could not have another child. Because you know, I'm in pain, I'm in pain, I'm bleeding, it's crazy. And, you know, I have no support. He knows what I went through. My friend knows what I went through. My friend, of course, she checks on me like, hey, how are you doing? It's only so much that she's, she's not responsible to take care of me, but he, he was at that time responsible. And we made it and, and he didn't, he went out of town. He went out of town three days later, he went out of town and looking back at it, I understand that that was his method of coping with things. But at the same time, like a lot of women, we don't know these things until years later, we look back at the situation. And, but yeah, that's, that's my, that's my story. Yeah. That's, that's about like, that's my story. As far as like regret goes, do I regret it? No. I don't. Do I wish it was an easier process? Yes, I do. Um, and I feel like I do have times where I'm like, oh, like, like it's hard for me to like look at twins sometimes. But in retrospect, like I have to remember that the world keeps going afterwards. You know, the world keeps going no matter what. Um, but as far as regret goes, no, um, the cost of living is too high. Um, 
the housing crisis. I was living in a, at a decent, like this is a, this is a very big one bedroom apartment, a very decent sized one bedroom apartment. And to have to like try to be able to afford at least two bedrooms where I live, no, no, it's not, I don't regret, I don't regret anything because I just know my standards of living growing up and that's the same standard of living that I want to give my children, not poverty, not having to share everything, not being able to go places. So I don't, I, I don't regret it. Um, I mean, Planned Parenthood, um, when it came to the workers and then being very cold, and I understand that like they kind of have to keep up that demeanor because they can't really like get too emotionally involved. But at the same time, if you see somebody that's obviously distressed, you being cold is not going to make me feel better because it makes me feel like you're judging me. You know? Because how hard is it to give up? Oh, sweetheart, everything's going to be okay. You know? choose choose take the pills or not to take the pills i should still be receiving that comfort care no matter what because i accompanied one of my friends to her abortion and where she went the nurses were trying to make her laugh they had magazines they had the girls kind of like grouped together like in groups so every process she went you were with the same group of girls so you do kind of getting familiar and you guys, were, you know, we were all, we were all talking and we were all explaining like, why we were there. you know, it made you feel more comfortable, but in the Planned Parenthood, I was sitting there like this the whole time, just by, just, just by myself. Nobody said hello to me, nothing, just very cold, not a great place to go. I'm not saying all Planned Parenthood, but the one that I went to particularly, very disappointed. In. my friend's boyfriend dropped this off at her clinic and before he drove off the the pro-lifer was like go back in there she's gonna kill your baby and what's crazy to me about the pro-lifers is that I'm like he's the one that sent her in here like <laughs> it's telling him to go get his baby and he's the one that sent her in here what do you mean go get her baby he's the one who told her to go get the abortion it's like he sent her in there. He gave her the money for it and everything. I don't think he's going back in there to go get it. And instead of you going in there and trying to offer these people decent help that they can live off of, you're going to yell and scream in front of the clinic. People have already, people have paid deposits. They're coming in regardless of you being out there or not. People have paid, people are paying five, six dollars out of pocket. They're not turning around because you said so. <laughs> They're not doing it sorry they're not doing it um but as far as but if there was more resources out there for single mothers and there was more housing and stuff was more affordable would I so have made that choice definitely would have made still looking back at it at that time I probably wouldn't have but two years later almost I definitely still would have me today would have still went through with the abortion because um I don't think that the lifestyle that I want right now is conducive. It's not conducive to add another child. It's not, it's not what I I'm wanting right now, especially going from two kids to four and a blink of an eye. That's something that I'm not too interested in doing. So only three people knew. Um, and then afterwards I was a little more open about it. Did I tell my mom? No. <laughs> Not really. No, I did not. Um, did I, you know, my friend expressed to me that she was pregnant and she was going through something similar, just not as extreme as me. Um, I did confide in her and let her know that, yeah, I did do what I had to do. And am I more open about it now? Period. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. At this point, all my friends know. At this point, all my friends know because it's such a stigmatized thing. If you go and ask your friend that they've had an abortion, you're going to be surprised. You're going to be surprised how many of them say yes. You're going to be very surprised at how many. And ever since I became an advocate for abortion and an advocate for women to make the choice with their own bodies, it's been so refreshing, not refreshing, because it's a horrible word to use, but it's been so eye-opening about how many women 
around us go through these things and we're just afraid to speak on it and we're ashamed of ourselves, but it's crazy how many women go through having an abortion. But yeah, at the time it was something that I was definitely trying to keep kind of like a close knit secret. I feel like one of my friends came out and said that she's had one, um, like, like out publicly and getting like on TikTok and getting like on social media and women are starting to speak out. You're like, you know what? Like, yeah, fuck. Yeah. Yeah, like this is a real life. This is a real life thing. That's this is a real life thing that happens to women. Like this is something that's irreversible. Irreversible. Like even even after having the abortion, I was reading stuff saying that I would have a hard time getting pregnant again. I would never, you know, my insides are basically ruined and stuff like that. And then people are coming out on TikTok. Yeah, I had an abortion. But now I'm in a loving, a loving relationship. And now we have four kids, blah, blah, blah. You're really having something. You're like, this is normal. Like, this is crazy how normal it is. And I'm just like, and like I said, I didn't know how accessible abortions were in Georgia until I did my own research. Abortions and aid act and aid access is very accessible, but they don't want us to, but they don't, they don't want anybody else to know that. And so I make it my point to let women know when they do confide in me all the resources that there are because there's no reason to be ashamed like I, like I was like it's a it's a it's a I don't I don't want to use these words because I don't want anybody to think that like I'm like glamorizing abortion because I'm not but it's like a womanly revolution and I don't want anybody to feel ashamed when they should be feeling empowered over their body and that's how, and that's kind of what made me become so open about abortion and women having rights to their body. Because I would kick my son, I would kick my son, in the sh- I would kick my son in the kneecaps if he ever told me that he wanted to force his girlfriend to have an abortion or force it on a baby. That's not up to you, son. <laughs> it's not up to you. But that, that's kind of what shifted my thought process. It definitely social media definitely would be the not gonna lie would be the 100 percent concrete reason why i would just want to convey that it's gonna be okay no matter the decision you make it's gonna be okay and everything will eventually work itself out it might suck at that moment abortions suck being a parent sucks. It just depends on how long you're willing to let it, t- how long you want to suck. I mean, parenting is great. Don't get me wrong. Yay. Love, love the crotch goblins. Don't get me wrong. But there's just some days where it's just like, if I would have known how accessible abortions were, like, what would my life have been like if I would have known that abortion? And I would just say, honestly, do your research. You need to not only do your research on the type of abortion that you're looking into, but do do your research on what resources are around you to to parent before making a decision. Because people people get pregnant and have these kids thinking they're going to be able to qualify for things that they don't qualify for. And now, and now we're all looking around here looking crazy because you thought you were able to get food stamps, section eight and rental assistance and whatever. And you chose the parent in reality, you can't do any of that. And now, and now we're a women's rights issues because, you know, not only you have to do your research on all your options you're considering, not just abortion, not just parenting. You need to do your research on everything to make sure you're making the right decision for yourself. And my last piece of advice is I know it's very hard, but you have to, you have to, you have to close your ears to the bullshit. You have to close your ears. You have to close your ears to the bullshit and you have to set those boundaries to people around you. You, you have to, or you will be pressured into making a decision that you do not want to make. The tongue is powerful and you cannot, 
if somebody in the situation right, that you're going through right now, if they are trying to make you make a decision that you do not want to do, you need to go no contact until you've made your decision and come back and tell them because you will face, you are the only person that faces these consequences. That's it. And that's, and that's my TED talk.